I have hoped that I might live to broadcast the second coming of Christ. I was not there for the only other news event that compares the day he rose from the dead. You know the man I would like to have interviewed that first Easter day? Barabbas. Or the crucifixion day preceding, if he'd felt like talking. Barabbas. The Bible mentions him only five or six times. Tells little of what he was like. But how I would have wished to follow him home that day when he, though sentenced to die, did not die. I'd like to have walked down Calvary Hill with him. Others coming from the show would have called out to him, let's stop for a drink, Barabbas, let's celebrate. But you know, as I imagine it, and the rest of this is as I imagine it, he would have waved in preoccupied recognition of the greeting and then continued shuffling along the dusty road toward his humble house. Eventually he'd turn, notice me, and he'd say, did you see it? And I would say, I saw he would say, how do you figure that fellow being willing to die in my place? What's his angle? And I think I'd have remained silent, let him reason it out. At the foot of the hill, Barabbas and I ducked away from the crowds, took a camel trail shortcut past rows of square houses, their flat tops strung with drying vegetables, ripening fruit, their occupants away or just coming awake between midday and mealtime. It was hot, the air was bittersweet from desert flowers and dung fires. Barabbas was like a man sleepwalking. I had never seen him like this. I had seen him leading riots and brought in for robbery, fighting, licentiousness, finally tried for murder, violent, abusive, sullen sometimes, but never like this. We had seen three men die up there on the hill. We'd seen men die before. But one of these had died in his place, and Barabbas just couldn't figure it out. I don't know what brought his wife to the door. Apparently she hadn't heard. Her cry, Barabbas, was of disbelief, not delight. Her round, tired face remained expressionless. What happened, she said. This callous, childless woman had often opened the door to her husband, drunk, fleeing, sometimes frightened, but she had long since declined to open her hurt heart anymore. And I had a fleeting feeling that she was not really glad to see him even a little otherwise. Barabbas, she started to speak in that flat voice, to ask again, but instead stepped aside and we entered, and I stood awkwardly for a moment before he indicated a bench. I sat. It was a box-like room, mud walls, divided in two parts only because the beds and the rough-hewn chest and cooking utensils were on a higher level, and there were indications that livestock shared the lower level with the work table and the loom and the bench on which I sat. At long last, Barabbas spoke, Pilate gave him a choice. A choice, said his wife, who? The crowd for Passover, the whole mob voted who should die, him or me. The priests got them all riled up and they voted him to die. I'm free. Barabbas stared at his wife and then at me. I don't think he saw either of us. And then he was talking again, not elatedly, certainly not jubilant, but an incredulous expression evolved, like a man looking at a new baby, a kind of solemn wonder. He said, this man, Jesus, they tried to get him to confess. Pilate kept asking him. All he'd had to do was confess he was not the son of God. Oh, that one, Mrs. Barabbas interrupted. Don't say that one, that way, woman, Barabbas snapped. He gave his life for me. There was a tense silence, and I dropped a large question into it. Do you think, I said to Barabbas, that he is the son of God, the one Moses and the prophets predicted? Again, Barabbas was silent a long moment. His wife was silent, and then he said, I doubt it. Barabbas said he looked pretty much like anybody else to me, but I'll tell you something. Barabbas' eyes x-rayed mine. I'm going back up there when they cut him down. And if he gets up out of the grave like he said, if that dead man up there comes back to life, then I'm joining up with his followers. Why, I said. Because he died for me, Barabbas fired back. Ain't that enough? And besides, said Barabbas... I want to learn how he does it. And Mrs. Barabbas, her eyes somehow softer now than I remembered, walked over beside her husband, touched his hand. I'd had my interview a little later I left. It was a good story. But instead of heading toward town, I found myself walking back toward Calvary. I figured to stay with the guards and the followers. The governor had ordered an unprecedented seal on the tomb and soldiers to guard it. No man dead or alive could escape that. 
no mortal man. The prophets had said three days. I'd waited out. I don't know what I expected, but if he could do it, what a story. What a bio. The greatest maybe make a book out of it. And besides, if this Jesus of Nazareth could make good, if he could die and rise again, then he'd said anybody could. And like Barabbas, I figured that was just too good a deal to pass up. I was not familiar with this shabby section of Jerusalem, and it was growing dark, but I could see the cross on the crest of the hill silhouetted against the Judean sky. I could follow that. I would find my way. <laughs> 